And then next, I will be reading um, an original poem that I wrote, or I started writing it um, at the workshop um, at the Congregational Retreat in September last year. And that workshop was led by Jesse Peterson, who will be reading a poem later. So it's kind of a full circle here. Um, so this poem I called uh, Pining for Air. You know how they say that a tree's roots extend so deep into the ground that its above ground shape is basically mirrored into the earth. On the pine needle strewn road, I saw what I first thought were pieces of firewood or tiny logs accidentally dropped on the way to the campground's wood storage bins. But I was wrong. They were roots sticking up through the soil or rather like reaching their arms all the way from Hades into what they perceived as Apollo's bright domain, reaching into the air for the vague promise of sun rays and perhaps unbound freedom. I stepped on one of the limbs. I wanted to shed my shoes, wanted to kill my rubber sole, wanted to press my calluses against the weathered surface, silky, soft, and at the same time, hard as a hog. I looked up and I realized that the tree's trunk with its branches also seemed to mirror my own torso. And arms with pine cones for fingertips and with my seventh chakra standing for the tree's heavenly crown. But I was left wondering what treasure lies at the bottom of the tree's upside down crown that which no one sees, firmly rooted, not growing up, but down, digging deeper, inch by inch, year by year. Then I came back. This is the last summer. My naked toes now caress the wood while I close my eyes, and I know where my roots end, someone else's begin. <clears throat> I'm going to share a couple of my poems. Um, I write typically an awful lot of nature poetry, of observing the world around us. And I think specifically for the purpose that uh, the Rilke poem that Krista shared is in, in praise of all of the little details in the world around us. Um, I have host a uh, trail cam on our property for the DNR. And so every three months I have to go check the trail cam and pull the um, memory stick out of it. And then I get to go through and see what animals have uh, walked across the trail cam over the course of the last three months. And it's always a delight and a looking back because uh, I might be in January looking at photos from September. And it's a lovely way to connect with the cycle of the seasons. So that's what this first one is about. Checking the trail cam. Beyond my window, January snowflakes sift and drift like mica shards of sky, trailing slow and fat until Caught in a sudden updraft, they flow lazily towards the eaves. Maple tops rooted deep in the seepage swamp below the hill sway and shiver. But on my screen, September light catches sumac starting to turn, and goldenrod glows above the soft ripple of the slough. I wade through all the sets of breeze-whipped leaves triggering the shutter, sort does and June fawns just now losing their spots from the antlered bucks, catalog the sly lope of coyote at night, the low slink of fox down the bank to drink. Sunrises spangle the crest of the opposite river bank sparkle on new snow as the year deepens to dark 
and the slough grows a thickening skin of ice. Silently awaiting the silken slip and glide of otters romping, their sleek bellies on the snow, penning icy lyrics for the wind to sing. Sometimes an, an animal that uh, you maybe think is not super attractive or appealing in, in our general sense of, of wild things being beautiful uh, can trigger something in you too. So that, that's what this next one is about. It's called Possum Lights. Returning home late in the new moon darkness, our headlights fan out across the orchard, forming a dusky cave of light over the apple-strewn drive. Frequently, we see twin fawns feeding on windfall fruit. They turn in tandem to our lights, souls shuddering in their skulls behind their frosty reflective gaze. <clears throat> Tonight, the deer have abandoned their post, seeding the crab apples to lesser kin. A plump, silvery possum wades into the pooled light, trailing his naked reptilian tail in the dust. We expect the usual possum melodrama, Blanche Dubois fainting under the lights, but this possum perhaps tipsy on too ripe fruit, bears his needle teeth in a hiss and comes for us. Tons of steel surrounding us cannot compare with his cruel grin, compete with his cruel grin. Tired of being typecast as jester, he intends to fix our wagon, to chew through our headlights and transfix us with his eerie red eyes to trap us, breath caught between our teeth, frozen in possum lights. I'm gonna share two more. One that uh, connects the natural world with, with our, our human built world <clears throat> called apricity, which is the warmth of the sun in winter. This year, there's been a dearth of days to savor it. Those days when it is bright, but bitter, crisp air filtering the slow gathering glow of that star almost a hundred million miles away. Everything smells different in the cold, newer and somehow from farther away. In the depths of summer, smells are almost liquid, the air so full of scent you could swim through it. Like the year I learned about the laundromat, the washer in the barn utility room busted, spraying suds over the dusty concrete and the pile of muddy barn boots by the door. So we all got packed in the back seat of the farm truck, wedged in between wicker baskets of wet. A small squat building on the edge of a small squat town. The laundromat was loud with whirring dryers and the smell of hot cotton, the grainy, too sweet scent of detergent sold in little boxes from a vending machine, 70s AM radio playing, raindrops keep falling on my head, without a cloud in sight. I soon got sent outside to the postage stamp parking lot, edged with white pickets, half falling over in weeds, <clears throat> Over the back corner, by the dryer vents, sprawled a gnarled, overgrown apricot, 
full of dead ripe July fruit hanging like glowing curry colored lanterns or scattered smashed into the dry limey yellow gravel of the lot. One perfect golden handful hung just above my head and though I jumped and jumped and jumped, flailing my skinny arms over and over, it stayed just out of reach, the gravel dust billowing up to cling to its softly furred cheek, until a car door slammed and it dropped, a small golden comet hurtling towards my cupped hands, a felicity of apricot, juicy and warm and smelling faintly of almonds, an apricity of summer. Then I want to finish with one that I think really speaks to why I write. Um, because noticing and sharing the world around us in my particular words, and in your particular words, um, is, is a form of prayer. Noticing how, after a rain, the mud at the edge of the drive loves the wild turkeys, holding their autographs for days. How freshly laid asphalt steams after a sharp July shower, as do four turkey buzzards in a roadside oak, their pinions outstretched in worship against the sky. How the starlings congregate on the edge of October, fellowship in the scraggy hedges by the parking lot, a hidden chorus of sweet whistling kibitz. How the ululating trill of the crane falls with cold rain, a raft of invisible wings bearing the sky south for the winter. <laughs>